What's up everybody, welcome back. So in the last video we laid the base of our new weapon wheel and in today's video we're gonna set up the new weapon inventory system. So right now we can only carry three weapons and if we pick up another weapon it's going to replace the one in our hand unless we already have it. Uh, so we're gonna make a new array on the character so he can carry more weapons and he can assign three of them in the weapon wheel and have easy access to them and the other ones uh, will simply be in his inventory. So that's what we're going to do today. If you like the series, please consider leaving a like. And if you want to get your hands on the project files, you can become a member of the YouTube channel or become a Patreon. And then you will get access to the premium channels and also a download of this project file. So the premium channels in the Discord. And so let's dive into today's video. So we're going to do most of the work in the base character. So let's open up that one. And we're going to start in the event graph. So first of all, we want to go to begin play. And in here, we are setting the size of our weapon inventory. So we're going to change the use of this variable. So right now it sets the weapon inventory of our loadout. And the new setup is going to be that our loadout is always the size of three. So I can assign one secondary weapon like a pistol and two primary weapons and then a grenade or something like that. So the actual weapon loadout size is going to be 3. So uh, we don't need to set that in a variable. And the inventory size, we can increase that so the player can carry more weapons than just those 3. So in here, we can increase the number to make sure we can test is, if everything is working. So I'm going to set this inventory size to 5, for example. So this is in begin play. And then just a little bit down the line. Then we're going to go to the server setup weapon inventory function over here. And in here right now we're using the weapon inventory size. So we're going to get rid of this getter and we're simply going to put three in here. So this is for the loadout inventory. So this is always going to be three. Then we want to do the same thing inside of the can switch weapon function. So that should be in here as well. Can switch weapon. And in here, we are checking the weapon inventory size as well. So we want to get rid of this getter and then simply put 3 in here. Oh, like so. And that should be good to go as well. And then there should be another one inside of the find weapon slot function over here. And we don't actually need to change this because over here we're going to make sure that the weapons are going to be added to the inventory and not to the player's loadout. So in here we can simply keep together. So let's make sure that we replaced all of the references. And we actually did. So our, we are good to go over here. Then to make things a little bit easier, I'm going to rename this weapon inventory names array. So uh, this array is currently already uh, pretty much used. So we're using it for switching weapons, reloading, ammo, all of that stuff. So if we are going to change this array, that's going to be a lot of work. So I'm simply going to rename this array and keep it. So that is going to be the weapon loadout. And then we're going to add a new array of names, and that's going to be the player's inventory. So let's duplicate this array. And this is going to be the weapon inventory. So we do need to make sure that it's replicated, and then we should be good to go. So I'm going to move it up here next to the other one. Over here. And then I'm also going to grab my inventory size, which is a bit further down the line. And I'm also going to put it right here. So we have those variables nicely put together. And so now we want to make sure that we use the new inventory array if we add weapons to the inventory. So we want to go back to the server setup weapon inventory function, this one. And this is being called at the start of the game to set up the 
inventory of the player. So this is going to load the inventory from the player profile, uh, not the inventory, sorry, the loadout. So that's actually the weapons that the player selected in the, uh, in the lobby menu. And then assign that to the weapon loadout array. So that's good. But then we also want to add them to our new array. And that is going to be the inventory array. So we're going to grab this part with the set array element if it's an empty weapon. And we can simply replace the array over here. So we're going to put it inside of the weapon inventory array and make sure we plug in the index over here. And then for this one, we're going to change this function to make sure it actually adds it to the inventory over here. So we can simply grab the set array element with the weapon loadout and paste that over here. And make sure that we plug in the index and also the name that comes from the input of the function. So in this case, we're adding it to the loadout and this is going to add it to the inventory, but we're going to get to this in a little bit. So now we have an array with the size of three for the weapon inventory, but we need to make sure that we also add empty slots if the array turns out to be bigger. So we're going to grab a branch over here and hook it up to the completed bin. And then we're going to check if our weapon inventory size is greater than the length of our weapon inventory array. So let's grab greater than. And then grab the weapon inventory array. So we already added the three slots over here. So if this turns out to be bigger than the three we already have. So we need to get the length in here. Then we want to add empty slots for those um, numbers, indexes. So we're going to grab a for loop and hook it up to true pin. So not for each, but for. And then we're going to start the index at the length of the, uh, the current length of the array. And the last index is going to be the weapon inventory size minus one. So subtract one and plug it into the last index. And then we're simply going to add an empty slot to our weapon inventory array. So grab the set array element for the weapon inventory, not the loadout. Plug it into the loop body and plug in the index so the slot's going to be empty that's good and then plug in the return node to the completed pin and then we could grab this false pin and plug it in over here as well and then we should be good to go so right now at the start of the game we're going to make sure that the arrays are good to go they have the correct size and they have the correct loadout that the player selected in the menu and then we want to do the server add the weapon to inventory function for if a player picks up a weapon from the ground, for example. So we're going to get to server add weapon to inventory. And in here, pretty much all we need to do is change this getter and turn it into the weapon inventory array. So let's grab weapon inventory, plug that in over here. And then we are good to go over here. So we're also going to change how the MO is working. Uh, instead of adding new arrays for the loadout, and then we're going to have to deal with updating two arrays if we fire a weapon, because we need to update the inventory MO and the loadout MO. So that's going to be annoying. So we're all only going to keep the MO arrays for the weapon inventory. And then we're simply going to create a, ma a macro that will get the correct index for the inventory with the loadout name that we are currently using. So we can simply retrieve MO values like that. Um, so we don't need to worry about this part. We're going to leave that as is for now. And we should be good to go. And so now we're going to do the new MO setup. So as I mentioned, we're going to change how we use the MO arrays. So we're going to make a little macro to make our lives a little bit easier. So let me clean this up a little bit quickly. There we go. Uh, so let's go to macros over here and I'm going to click the little plus sign and call this macro get MO index. I'm going to select the input and I want to give it one input and that's our loadout index. 
loadout index. That's an integer. And then we're going to return our MO index. And that's also an integer. So we are pretty much working with our uh, active weapon index variable most of the time. So that's the variable that we use a lot to determine what weapon we're working with. So uh, we don't need to plug it in here. So we're going to grab our weapon loadout array and we're going to get the current weapon that we are using. So that's the loadout index. And then we're going to find that index in the weapon inventory because those don't have to match. So find item. And then that's going to be the same index that we can use for our ammo arrays to get the correct values. So just a little macro to make our lives a little bit easier. And then we can simply search for all of the ammo arrays inside of the base character and make sure that we update them. So I'm going to find the references for the ammo stop maximum. And that's only one. So double click it. And this is actually inside of the server at weapon to inventory function. So this is where we set everything up and this is good to go. So we don't need to worry about this function. We don't want to change it in here. So let's search for the ammo clip maximum, find references. Uh, so add weapon to inventory, we can ignore. Check ammo in here. We do want to add our little macro. So we need a little bit of room. Disconnect the weapon index that we plug in over here. Grab the new macro. So this is going to be the loadout index and then the ammo index goes into the get node. And that's all we need to do. And in reload ammo, we have a bunch of them as well. So do the same thing, simply add in the macro over here. Ammo index and that return, uh, sorry, loadout index and that returns the ammo index. So this is not clip maximum, by the way. So let's go down the list to make sure we don't miss anything. There we go. So that's ammo clip maximum. And then we have the ammo stock array. So that's a bunch more of them. We have two of them on the event graph. So we do want to change these ones. Oop. So I'm simply pasting in the macro and replace the pins. So this is ammo clip by the way. So this is not the second one over here. So let's double click this one. This is simply an input so we can leave that as it is. Uh, server add weapon to inventory. We can ignore that as well. Check ammo. Let's go in here and add the little macro. And then for reloading as well. So simply go down the list and make sure that you replace everything. So in here, let's see, that's our server reload ammo. So let me double check my notes quickly, but I'm pretty sure we do need to change them in here. Yeah, we do need to add them over here to the set array elements as well. So let's plug in the active weapon index and then the ammo index that returns is the index for the set array element over here so i'm simply going to go down the list again so over here we have another one for the active weapon index so paste this one in and the next one as well So these are all inside of the server reload ammo function. So you do want to replace all of them. So simply go down the list. And that should work. And make sure you plug them in the index, not the item. Um, so those are all of the ammo stock ones. And then we need to do the ammo clip ones. So let's search them as well and start in the event graph. So I already did this one. The second one is the getter, so we don't need to worry about it. Add ammo to inventory, we can skip that one. 
So take bullet from clip. We do want to do it in here. So there's two of them. Uh, weapon index we want to grab that one plug it in the loadout and that returns the index over here and then we have the check ammo function so there's two of them in here oh, we there we go and then the reload ammo so also replace all of the clip ones in here nope uh, yeah that's correct the ammo index there we go And plug in the ammo index over here. And then this is the last one. So let's paste it in over here as well. There we go. So we have our new ammo index set up as well. And so when you do stuff like this, it's easy to just work down the list and make sure you don't forget anything. So if you're inside of this function and you see, oh, here's one and here's one and you start replacing them randomly, uh, it's easier to just stick to the plan and you will get there in the end. And so we have the ammo array set up and now we need to go to our weapon pickup and we need to make some changes in there. Uh, I was a little bit too soon. We need to tackle one more function inside of the hero base character. So we want to go to the find weapon slot function over here. So this is called by the weapon pickup to determine where to place the weapon in the player's inventory. So we want to make sure that we replace the loadout over here with the weapon inventory. So we're going to add the weapon to the inventory, not to the loadout. And then move to the side a little bit. So over here, again, replace the loadout with the inventory array. So we check the correct array for empty slot. And then at the end over here, we want to make sure that we return our uh, empty slot boolean. So let's grab the local is empty slot variable and we're going to return that one as well. And let me rename it quickly. So let's make this uh, empty slot found, for example. So we know if we found an empty slot or not. And so we can compile and save the hero base character. And now we're going to go to the weapon pickup. So let's go to the gameplay and then loot folder. And in here we want to open the uh, blueprint child pickup weapon. And we need to make changes to the pickup function in here. So let's start at the beginning. So this is the only place where a player can get new weapons in the game. So that's the easy part about this. Uh, so we added the empty slot found uh, boolean to the find weapon slot function. And we're going to make sure that we have a local variable for that as well. So let's promote it to a local variable. And that's going to be a local empty slot found, for example. And make sure that we set it over here at the beginning. So set it to the return value of the find weapon slot function. And that's good to go. So then over here, a local is new weapon and is ammo pickup. Uh, if this is true, then we're simply going to go to the end of the function and return. So we don't need to worry about this branch. The false pin, uh, we want to remove the local item picked up from here. So the setter, let's get rid of that one. And let's disconnect the data table and move it out of the way a little bit. Then first, we want to check if this is a new weapon or not. So let's grab a branch in here, plug it in. And we're going to check local is new weapon. 
uh, that's over here. And then if it's not an ammo pickup, so and and then grab the ammo pickup and add a knot bool. Oh, not this one, but the knot boolean. This one. Plug it in over here. Um, so if this is true, then we're gonna add another branch. And then we want to know if we found an empty slot or not. Move this over a little bit. Uh, so if we found an empty slot, we're gonna set our local is item picked up to true immediately. And then we can plug it back into the server at weapon to inventory. So then we can always pick up the weapon and simply add it. And if this is false, then we would want to present the player with the widget to replace the weapon later. But we're not going to worry about that. So for now, I'm just going to add a print string. And I'm going to say something like uh, inventory pool. Add widget later. And let's make it five seconds. So there we go. We know uh, if this happens, uh, this is not an error or something. We need to just worry about it later. And then we need to continue from the false pin over here. And again, we want to set our item picked up boolean over here. So set it to true. And then we want to grab our data table so let's plug it into the get table row and then we want to go to our is new weapon boolean over here so plug the row found into the local is new weapon uh, let me see i'm going to make this a little bit messy right now okay so let's do it a little bit differently This item picked up is true. So then. Oh, I actually. Okay, so I see what I messed up over here. So these branches are the same. Uh, so that doesn't really make sense. So I should have just moved this one and I recreated it. So we can get rid of this one. And then we have the local is new weapon and not an ammo pickup. We picked up the item and then we're going to go to our data table move no come move this over here row found goes into the branch for the local is new weapon and then for the add weapon to inventory plug it into the get table row as well and then we're going to continue over here so that's how it should be so i'm just going to scroll by it slowly so you can see it So that's the correct setup for the branches over here. Um, then we want to move a little bit further down the line. And in here, we are actually checking if we are wielding the current weapon that we are re uh, replacing. And we need to do that in a little bit different way. So we're going to grab our player character with the active weapon index. And we can get rid of this. Then we also want to get the loadout from the character. So get weapon loadout. And from the loadout, we're going to get the active weapon index. Like this. And then we can compare that to the weapon row name to add from this pickup. So we can simply do equal. And the weapon row name to add comes from the input of the function. Uh, sorry, that's a default variable on the pickup. So it's not even from the function. You can just drag it in from the variables over here. Make sure we hook this one back up to the end node and that will replace the check over here. And the last thing we want to do is go all the way to the end. And we don't want to switch weapons if we pick up a weapon and add it to the inventory. So we're not adding it to the loadout. So we don't want to switch to it. So we're simply going to plug this right into the return node and forget about this part for now. 
So we're going to get back to that a little bit later, but for now, let's just remove it. Okay, so that will be the update for the pickup function, and this should make it work. So now we will add it to the player's inventory and not to the player's loadout. And so now all we need to do is make sure that the new array actually gets to our weapon wheel widget. So first of all, let's open the weapon wheel widget. Uh, widget blueprint weapon wheel. And in here we're going to add the inventory array. So we can simply grab the weapon loadout and duplicate it. And that's going to be the weapon inventory. So make sure it's instance editable and exposed on spawn. And then you should be good. So let's compile and save it. And then we need to go to our player controller. So framework shooter player controller. And open up the UI open weapon wheel. So in here we added the new pin to the widget. So let's refresh the node over here. And we simply want to pass on the weapon inventory to the input of the function. So make sure you just drag it on here and it will create the array. And then we also want to set it over here if we simply add the widget to the viewport again after it's already been created. So let's add a little bit of room and drag off the weapon wheel and we're going to set our weapon inventory. Reconnect the execution pin. So plug this back into the add viewport and then grab the inventory from the input over here. Compile and save and that should be good player controller uh, yeah that should be good so then we can go back to our hero base character so free uh, sorry characters and then hero base and first of all let's take a look at the input event so go to the event grab and we have the input action weapon wheel uh, in here we need to make sure we pass on the new weapon inventory array so we're simply going to grab it from the variables and plug it in here that's good to go and the next thing i want to do is add a new variable uh, to make sure that we cannot uh, well cannot but we won't switch to the same weapon uh, so let me try and explain uh, if we go to the switch weapon functions over here uh, let me see. So we actually already changed this up a little bit and we got rid of the checks. But I want to make sure that if we moved a weapon from slot 2 to slot 3, for example, then we are changing slots, but we are not actually changing weapons. Uh, so I want to make sure that we don't switch to a weapon that we already have. And to do that, we need to create a new variable. And that's going to be the previous selected weapon. And we need to set that right at the beginning of the select weapon function over here. So let's just make a little bit of room. And then from the weapon loadout get active inventory index, we're going to promote it to a variable. And that's our previous selected weapon. So we can plug it in over here. And then we want to go to our switch weapon event. Uh, so let me quickly switch my notes over here. So start switch weapon. So that's over here. And this time we need to grab the inventory index from our weapon loadout. So let's go to the weapon arrays, weapon loadout. And we're going to get a copy of the inventory index we put into the event and we want to make sure this is not equal to our previous selected weapon so that's all the way down the list over here and then we should be good to go so we can plug this into a branch over here and then only continue if this is true uh, so that should block switching to the same weapon. And now I think uh, we're going to cut it off for now. So I hate to do it. Uh, we don't really have anything to test. But before we get to a point where we actually can test something, I think we have 
well, certainly half an hour of work, maybe more. So there's some UI work in there, and that's always a bit tedious. So um, I think for now we need to call it. I'm sorry. Uh, so what we could do is make sure that we can pick up five weapons. So that should work. So that should be the fourth weapon. The Maverick rifle is the fifth one. I already have a shotgun and an SMG, but if I try to pick up the LMG, it's going to print the inventory full at widget later. So that's actually an indication that that part is working and we have an array with five weapons on the player and we have three of them selected. So, so far so good, but unfortunately that's the only part that we can test right now. Uh, still think ho uh, you hope it was worth watching the video and you enjoyed it. So if you did, please consider leaving a like and I'll be back soon for more. Talk to you later guys. Bye bye.